What's good, producers? It's Curtis King of CurtisKingBeats.com here with another producer motivation 911. Producers. Let's talk about producer tags. It's crazy, a lot of y'all have asked me, can I show you how to make a producer tag? And it kind of blows my mind, cause I'm like, it's a lot easier than what you think. Now, I know a lot of people pay for this service and that kind of blows my mind too, cause I never paid for a B tag. I always felt like it was something that, as long as I was capable of speaking, or I was capable of having a female friend of mine say my name or say my production name, that sounded kind of dirty. But as long as I had the opportunity for somebody with a beautiful voice to say my name, I had a producer tag in the working. Now, there's certain things that I think a lot of producers add to their tag that make it sound so glamorous and whatnot. But I'm going to break it down for you, the things that I do in particular that make me have the tags that I have. And it really doesn't require a whole lot. Now, the first thing you definitely want to have is some kind of multi-tracking program or at least the program, obviously, that you make beats on. It's probably ideal that you use a program that you make beats on, like, say, for instance, a Fruity Loops. And if you know how to record within that, then you are pretty much halfway to getting your own tag. Now, of course, there's a certain etiquette when it comes to producer beat tags, and you may even have questions about what a beat tag is. Well, what's the purpose of it? The purpose of a beat tag is no different from if you've ever worked with a photographer or worked with a graphic designer designer they put something on their work called a watermark and they put a watermark on there which is basically like their name or their logo or their copyright so that you won't steal their photo without giving them the proper credit or without paying so that being said it's your opportunity to have a watermark that's one it's a dual opportunity with your beat tag the second opportunity with your beat tag is to basically put your branding in people's minds now when you listen to certain tags like mustard on the beat ho metro booming wants some more these are getting inside of your head even if you don't even know that's the producer tag you know those names and you know what those tags are so that being said it's great from a branding standpoint as well ideally you want to have a beat tag that's short it's catchy. I say between two to five words. Metro Boomin want some more. Mustard on the beat, ho. They're like that for a reason. It's straight to the point. They roll off any kind of beat. It's just important that you understand that these are pretty much the criteria. You can, of course, bend the rules on them, but I think that if you understand why they do that, and like I said, it's really because of the way that it rolls off the beat, the way that it sort of enhances the song, especially after a producer starts to get a name for himself, it's really great to hear that tag and artists sometimes want that tag to be on there so it's like the official stamp like oh i got a mustard beat and i actually paid for it check me out now what you need may not be my particular setup you can honestly record the actual vocal of somebody saying your beat tag on a freaking iphone like what we're looking at right now you can use your vocals on your freaking voice recorder and send it to yourself via email and start editing that now that's one way to go about it obviously the second one is the one that i'm using right now now i'm using my microphone setup which is a perception 420 akg i'm using my pop filter i'm using my uh, mic stand and i'm using a multi-tracking program like I said, I would prefer that you use it within FL Studio, but for the sake of this particular video, I'm gonna show you on Adobe Audition. And I'm explaining these things now, but we're gonna go straight to the screen because I want you to actually see what it looks like. So this producer motivation may be slightly different from the other ones, but motivational nonetheless. So let's get started. Step one, recording the actual beat tag. Let's go ahead and do it right now. Curtis on the beat, ho. Curtis King Productions. Curtis King Productions. Curtis King Beats. Curtis King Beats. Curtis King Productions. I got drums, boy. Ooh, that slaps. Now we got options. So let's take it to the screen. Okay, so we took it to the screen. The next step, we're going to figure out which particular tag we want to keep. Now, I did a bunch of silly ones just so you can kind of get an example of how much fun you can have with this. But let's listen to some of the ones that I recorded. Curtis on the beat, ho. We're not keeping that one for sure. <laughs> Curtis King Productions. Okay. Curtis King Productions. I like that one. Curtis King Beats. That's cool. Curtis King Beats. Too slow. 
Curtis King Productions. Cool. I got drums, boy. Kind of like that one. Ooh, that slaps. That would be dope if I made nothing but trap beats. And that would be so tight. But I would have used this one. I got drums, boy. I would have used that one. Only issue is I think I set it a little bit too slow and I could manually speed it up. But for the example that I'm trying to set for you guys right now, we're going to use probably the most authoritative one and the one that demands your attention, which is probably this one. Curtis King Productions. I like that one. It's from the gut. So what we need to do, we need to go get this clip. We need to single it out. And then we need to do some slight editing so that we can go ahead and mix it up and get it prepared to be our next tag. So let's loop it around. Curtis King Productions. Curtis. And I want to get this breath away from there. But for now, we'll highlight that, right, right click it, and then copy to new. So now, copy to new. Close this. Copy to new. And as you can see, here's our clip. Curtis King Productions. Curtis King. Dope, right? Now, we want to get rid of this little air in between here and a lot of air that is at the end of it. So let's go ahead and clip a little bit of that off and delete it. Highlight the beginning of this. What we're going to do is a little fade in just so it smoothly comes in and a fade out. You want to always do this no matter which kind of recording you're doing. Boom. Curtis King Productions. Now that sounds strong as it is. I mean, you're going to have a few decisions you're going to have to make with your tag. It's very important. One being, do you want to go ahead and pitch it down, Curtis King Productions, or do you just want to mix it up? Now, I like to mix it. I mean, obviously, even if you pitch it down, you're going to have to do some mixing. But for the sake of this example, I want the clarity. And we're not going to add a, a bunch of effects to it right now. Our goal right now is to get clarity and to get a universal tag that we can mess around with and adjust to any beat. So that being said, let's do a little bit of editing on it. So we did the fade in and the fade out. Let's do the multi-band compressor on Adobe Audition. I love this little option it gives you. Now they have something called the de which kind of takes away the impact of the S and the S's and whatnot. So check this out. Curtis King Productions. Curtis. Now you could change the volume actually here with the output gain. Let's go like, uh, let's go about 2.5 and see what that sounds like. Curtis King Productions. 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 Cool. Multiband compressor. Let's go to the FFT filter. And what I like about this, it kind of widens the sound. They have this little mastering tool down here that I love using. It just makes it sound a lot more full and kind of just wide. I mean, that's just what I like is the clarity that you get with this. Let's try the gentle and wide. Curtis King Productions. Sweet. I'm going to use that one. Now, the graphic equalizer. I like to use something called lead. Vocal presence and clarity. Add that. Curtis King Productions. Now you get more clarity in that. Parametric equalizer. I do like a little low pass filter sometimes on this. You can experiment and see what sounds better depending on the tone of your voice, but I like the low pass filter on this. Curtis King Productions. Starts sounding like it has a little bit more oomph. Now, I'm going to show you what it sounds like to mess around with the pitch. Like I said, it really comes down to what you want to do. But here's what it would sound like with the lower pitch. Curtis King Productions. Curtis King Productions. Curtis King Productions. Curtis. Maybe that's really good with your voice. Hey, play around with it. Have fun with it. For the sake of this example, we're not going to do that. So we're going to close that out. I mean, that's pretty much all the editing we're going to do for that right now. I mean, one thing we could do is probably even increase the volume a little bit. Let's see what this volume says. Curtis King Productions. We could increase that probably like 2.0, 2.3. Let's try that. Curtis King Productions. I like that. So let's go back to the multi-track. Let's delete these takes that we had and put this new one here. Very important, especially on Adobe Audition, right click on whatever clip you put there and then rename it. So we're going to call this Curtis King Pro Tag. Boom. Now, one thing I love about Adobe Audition, and you can do this in FL Studio too, is that you can add effects directly on whatever channel you're working on. So for the sake of that, a few effects that you're going to hear very commonly used by a lot of these producers is a flanger or a sweeping phaser or a chorus or a reverb. You're going to use all of these things. 
mean, you don't have to use all of them, but you're going to hear all of these things and a lot of these tags. You decide what you want to have. I'm going to show you how to basically access those in Adobe Audition. First things first, let's mess around with an echo. Now, the echo is going to change from beat to beat, right? Because of the tempo and the BPM. So you can add that. You have the option to. I don't suggest putting an echo on here, but for this example, I want to show you how to use it. So let's go to the delay and echo echo i have a general echo that i i like to use the beats.com echo let's see what that sounds like curtis king productions, king productions. King productions. i like that because it kind of filters out the echoes as it go, as it kind of fades out i like that so let's keep that something else you might want to add a little modulation flanger this might blow your mind if you've never messed around with the flanger, but this is really what a lot of people get their effects from. Check this out. Curtis King Productions. Dude, that's pretty much all of people tags a lot of the time, which is crazy. It's just a flanger effect. Let's experiment a little bit more. I want to keep that actually. Go to the modulation. Let's do a sweeping phaser and see if that kind of pans things. Curtis King Productions. That's sounding cool to me. Let's actually take the volume of that. Curtis King Productions. Like I said, I would probably keep the phaser on there just because I like the way it sounds, but I wouldn't keep the echo only because you just never know the tempo of the beat you're working on. Imagine going from a trap beat with this particular tag and then going to like a slow R&B ballad and trying to get that to fit on there. So keep it raw. Keep it without the echo. See what that sounds like. Curtis King Productions. Sweet. My tag has presence. My tag has options. Now let's put a beat down and test it out. Let's try it on this one. And we're going to bring back these echoes and see if it actually fits with the beat. Curtis King Productions. Okay, now you may want to kind of take away from the harshness depending on what kind of beat you're doing one thing i would do for for that is to basically send it through like a telephone effect so it's going to be probably a parametric equalizing option where are we at let's try this and let's do like an old time radio see what that sounds like curtis king productions Sounding good. Let's bring that echo back. See what that sounds like. Curtis King Productions. Curtis King Productions. It fits to me. I like the way that sounds. Boom. We got a tag. Now, the one thing you want to make sure you do is that you go in here and you save as a wave save in mono do not save in stereo it's just a quality issue you might stay you might save in stereo or mp3 when you're dealing with my flash store only because they want you to have a very low res version of your tag so that it loads up easily within their system whenever somebody goes to your website so that's important there but for the sake of your tag keep it high quality we're going to go to the desktop and we're going to call this what well, we have it. Now, the options here that it gives you. Now, this is a pretty high quality wave. Now, typically, they'll tell you to do 24 bit. Um, 16 bit is the lowest on this one. But we're going to do 32 bit for this one. We're going to save it. Boom. Our tags here on the desktop. We got a tag. It was that easy. So in conclusion, add your effects after the fact. You want to make sure that you have the option to kind of mess around with that. Mess around with these things. Have fun. At the end of the day, it's your beat tag and whatever represents you. Have fun with it. You don't have to commit to one. I've gone through probably five or six beat tags since I started making beats. You're going to go through some. That being said, you can do this yourself. Save your money. These are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours. This has been another producer motivation. 911 Curtis King of Curtis King Would you consider yourself an aspiring producer? But well, what if I told you I could teach you the art of production on FL Studio, the same art form that I've been working with for the last 13 years. What if I told you I can teach you that art form in less than four hours? 